The next one is the Facebook like thumbnail. Now here we need to scroll down here on the left hand side and click on the link that says Facebook like thumbnail. And we don't have to change anything here, but we just need to hit save. I found with this plugin that if you don't hit save, sometimes it doesn't actually activate it. Now this is a really important plugin and what it does is it ensures that the correct thumbnail or the main thumbnail for each post that you do and, and by thumbnail I mean the small image that you've included in each post that we'll talk about in a later lesson is the the actual graphic image that gets imported when somebody likes your page or likes your post in Facebook. Uh, you've probably seen in Facebook where somebody likes something and it shows up on your wall and the image is completely unrelated to the actual content. That's because they're either not using this plugin or they haven't properly set up the preferences so that Facebook understands which image off their blog to use. So by doing this and installing this plugin, it makes it very, very easy. So let's go back to plugins. And we'll go down to this one, the Facebook share button zero count fix. We need to scroll down here on the left hand menu and click on where it says FB Share Zero Fix. Now what this plugin does is it prevents the Facebook share button from showing a distorted image when there isn't any shares yet on that particular piece of content. Uh, it, it's going to actually show the full window and have a zero uh, or a one or a two you can choose. I like to be honest about it and show zero when it has zero shares and click update. Once you've done that, now that fixes that problem. If you don't have this installed, what happens is until you have somebody with that first share of your content, the button doesn't align properly with the other elements of your page and it kind of just looks hokey. So with that fixed, let's go back again to the plugins page. Go down to the next one, which is the FB like button. So we're going to find that one down here under settings. Click on that. Now here we have a couple of choices. Now a lot of this is personal preference. Uh, you can choose to have the Facebook like buttons uh, above your content, below your content, or both. Uh, you can also choose whether or not to display it on pages. I prefer to have the like button at both the top and bottom of each of my posts. So we're going to leave the two top ones checked. I don't like it to show on individual pages of my blog but I will show it on the home page. So it'll show up on the home page posts and it shows up on individuals and then have display on individual posts. And then everything else here you can leave at the default. Uh, I prefer not to show faces in the like graphic. You can choose to recheck that if you choose and click update options. So now that's all set up. We go back to the plugins, go down to the next one. The Google Analyticator if you click on settings, you'll see that it's currently disabled. We're going to go ahead and enable it. And then what you'll do is you'll take your Google Analytics user ID and paste it right in there. Now, if you don't currently have a Google Analytics account, go ahead and set one up. It's free to do. Just go to google.com slash analytics, set up a free account, and then you'll have a user ID. You just paste it right into that location. And the rest of this you can leave at the default. And then when you get to the bottom, just click Save Changes. And it's still giving me red because I didn't enter a valid user ID. But once that's in there and it's been enabled, uh, you'll also get the immediate stats that show up on your dashboard main page. And then from that point forward, it will start tracking all the visitors and all the analytics for your blog. And that's a very, very important thing. You definitely want to be tracking your analytics. Whether you use Google or StatCounter or another analytics program, just be sure you use something. So let's go back to plugins. The next one is Google XML sitemaps. What this is going to do is generate an XML sitemap that can be submitted and kept up to date automatically and notifies the search engines anytime you have new content on your blog so that it brings the search engine bots and crawls that content and gets that listed immediately in the search engines. So over here again under settings we're going to go down to XML sitemap and at the top you'll just want to click this button that says click here to build for the first time. 
and then that will run and it will automatically generate a sitemap. If you want to view your sitemap, you can scroll down here to the bottom, uh, right here under location of your sitemap file, and you'll see that there's a link here. Let me open that in a new tab. It doesn't look like much to look at uh, when you're not a search engine, but this is going to be a, a very search engine friendly version of your website. So let's go back and we will go back to the plugins. That's all we have to do with the sitemap. SI Captcha anti spam. There's nothing we need to change with that. It's already enabled, it's already set up. And what that's done is it's added a captcha image to our comment form. So before someone can leave a comment on your blog, they have to enter that captcha image correctly. And what that does is it prevents the auto spam bots from basically hammering your blog with just bogus comments to get their link in there. Uh, they can virtually be eliminated by using this plugin. Uh, the next one, simple Facebook share, and we're almost done. That one we can go again over here under the settings menu, go to the simple Facebook share button. And once you get to the settings for that, we want to go ahead and change this to yes and then choose the style of our button. I typically use this one so that it does display the, the actual times that it's been shared. And then you can choose the position. I like to put it on the top right or the bottom right. But again, depending on the style and the layout of your blog, you can choose what's most appropriate. There's nothing else you need to change here. Just hit Save Settings and we're in business. So we've got one more to do. Go back to plugins. The very last one is the tweet meme retweet button. This one creates its own menu item. So instead of under settings, you'll see that there is actually a menu item for tweet meme. And if you click on that, it opens up the settings. So we want to be sure it's enabled. We want to choose whether we want to put it on pages. I choose not to. You can choose whether you want it on the front page and you can choose whether to put it in your feed. I usually display in my feed. Here you can choose the position, whether you want it before or after the content, or you can choose before and after your content. I'm going to go ahead and put it on uh, the top and the bottom of each post. And then your styling, if you want to change your styling, you can make some edits to this. This is going to be uh, some CSS coding. So you need to understand that. If you don't know what that is, you can leave that alone. But that allows you to customize and maybe fix any uh, styling or alignment issues with that showing up on your posts. Here's where you'll enter in your Twitter username so that when somebody retweets, it's going to properly attach uh, your retweet name or your properly attach your Twitter username into that tweet. And then if you're using a URL shortener like Bitly, you can put in your URL API key. You can put in your URL shortening API key. So if you're using Bitly, you can put in your Bitly API key. If you have a different one that you use here, you can add that in as well. Or you can just choose to use the default. Once you've done that, hit Save Changes. And that is it. So now let's go back and view our blog and we'll see what it now looks like. So you can see here I have added a post to this and I added a post because without any content none of these social sharing buttons would actually show up so it wouldn't have been a very good demonstration so I did add a piece of content so that we can really view and see what we've done so far and what the results of that are. Uh, as you can see here on the main page we now have the Facebook like button we've got the tweet meme tweet button we've got the Facebook share button at the bottom of the post we still have the like we also had chosen to also display our retweet button at the end of the post so that concludes this video portion uh, stay tuned for the next video